Well, my poor little Opal needs some serious mechanical work, especially after all those shenanigans up on the mountain. But mechanical stuff's kind of boring and I didn't really feel like it. So instead, I got some fog lights. <laughs> Picked up these really cool vintage Hello 160 chrome fog lights. They kind of fit the vibe of the car really well and it's like the old rally mantas. So I have a tentative plan. Let's see if it works. First, how cool are these things? Brand new in the box, shiny chrome with the nice covers. They come with H3 bulbs, as well as the original instructions in many different languages. Yeah, pop the cover off and these are beautiful old school fog lights. So my tentative plan A is to actually mount this in place of these bumperettes. This one in particular is actually broken on bottom and it's not really holding on. Um, but there's a mounting hole behind there that's actually part of the bumper beam. But I was thinking if I can mount it like this, it might be kind of cool. The downsides, of course, are that it's upside down and that it kind of protrudes from the bumper. So, and it's going to be turned a little bit this way. So I'm not sure if I'm going to love this, but it is the easiest first thing to try. And I really want to see what it looks like. So let's try that. Oh, yeah, that's actually broken, broken. Nice. Oh. Well, that's not going to work. So I'm obviously going to have to move on to a plan B or plan C, but just to show you what it kind of would look like. Pretty cool. Gonna have to make some kind of bracket or something. Never stop and wonder what you're doing with your life. Well, here's the result of my Mark I custom brackets. It's not too bad. I'm not crazy about the way it sticks out pretty far from the, the body. The clearance of the mounting stud on this is too tight to the, the valence. So I'm a little bit on the fence about it. Might need some modification, but it's progress. I think I had to make these first. This was kind of the simplest type of bracket I could think of. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to get an idea, so. I'm trying to do this as non-invasively as possible. I don't want to drill extra holes in the body. I don't even want to enlarge those holes in the bumper if I can avoid it. So it's all process to be continued. Well, sometimes it really pays to step away from a project for a little while and come back with new inspiration. As you can see, I've pretty much solved all of the problems. They're now right side up and tucked nicely against the bumper, facing straight ahead. And it's still a pretty simple bracket. I went back to the drawing board with a little bit more finesse this time. 
and made some new brackets. They're actually pretty similar to the first ones I made. I think the first time I was a little hung up on hiding the brackets behind the bumper. And some of you are probably wondering why I didn't do this the first time. It just didn't occur to me. I'm not that bright. Anyways, <laughs> let's take a look. do now is take these back off and probably paint them. I don't want them to rust. Um, and then I can put it all together. And the next step is wiring. Okay, while I'm in between paint coats, I thought I would show you my fancy eBay special wiring harness. Everybody sells this identical thing, so it's not hard to find. But it comes with a little switch that I actually won't be using. I have a very special plan for the switch. Um, and it's actually got its own separate connection, so you can pass it through the firewall a little more easily. Um, 40 amp relay, pretty standard. And then it's got a fused power link, 30 amp fuse. With these big old rings that are probably too big. I'll probably have to change those. And then of course the lamp connections. And it came with some extra shrink tubes. So I'll probably be doing that on this section. But uh, yeah, should work out pretty well for what we're doing. Okay, well as you can see, everything is on and working. So I figured I would just summarize what I've done. So after I got the brackets all painted up, put them back on, firmly secured, got the lights attached, firmly tightened them down, got everything hooked up, got the wiring run. So what I had to do with the wiring was I had to change those ring terminals for the battery like I thought. So I had a set of non-insulated terminals. So I like using those along with some shrink tube it's a little more of a professional looking result and works well. Then I mounted the relay to a bracket that's right next to the battery, so that worked out nicely. And ran the wiring alongside the main harness and brought it through to the driver's side light, attached it there, and then I was able to run it inside the bumper to the passenger side light. And I used some little wire holder brackets on the back side using existing holes for this rubber trim and a couple of extra license plate holes. So that's secured in place. For the switch to pass through the firewall, I actually found a uh, crow flying overhead. So for the switch passing through the firewall, I actually found an existing hole that was plugged up with a rubber plug. So I was able to find a grommet that was the right size because I didn't want the wires to be rubbing on, you know, just a metal edge. Um, so I was able to use a grommet and pass the wires through there and there's enough slack for the switch. When I was attaching the wiring to the lights themselves, um, I got in a little bit of a hurry because I was anxious to see them working. So at first I left alone the built-in ground strap that's inside these housings and the first time I tried to turn them on, I'm pretty sure the power wire was touching that ground strap, so it immediately blew the fuse. So I pulled them back apart and uh, taped down that ground strap, and then I put on some insulators that actually came with these lights uh, to shield the power wire uh, and make sure that it doesn't ground out. So I'm glad I went back and did that step. So after I was done hooking everything up and made sure it was all working, I went for a little test drive and I found out a couple things. For one, these bounce up and down really badly, so I'm going to have to do something about that. And second of all, these aren't fog lights. These are driving lights. There's a big difference. Fog lights are supposed to be a wide beam that kind of lights up everything around you, but it doesn't go that far. 
Um, these are driving lights. It's more of a narrow spotlight that goes far and is bright, but you don't get that sort of wide everything light that I was actually kind of hoping for. So not sure how I feel about that, but at least they look cool. And that was at least 80% of the motivation for doing this. So maybe I can live with it. So because these are just hanging down on a single arm, there's nothing to really stop it from wobbling like that. So I think the best option to address this is actually to triangulate this sort of the way the factory was with this down here being a connection to the bumper to tie it all together. So I think if I make another straight bracket that comes to here, I think that'll make this a lot more solid. It's worth a shot anyway. Okay, so here's what I came up with for these extra brackets. They just attached at those lower mounting holes where the rubber bumperettes were. And I decided to slot this hole so there's some adjustability, because if I need to aim this light a little bit differently, I'll need this to be able to move around a little. So I drilled several holes in a row and just kind of filed them together. And then at the other end, it's just bent and attached to the fog light bracket. So just as a comparison, if I smack this one it moves but it doesn't jiggle around like this one unbelievably jiggly this one pretty solid now so I'll make another one for the other side uh, paint them and I think once both sides are all triangulated and tied together it's gonna be a nice solid setup Okay, fast forward to the next day. I cleaned these up and painted them, let them sit overnight so the paint could cure. And I added some uh, rubber pieces underneath here. I had some leftover rubber sheet from a prior project, so I wanted to kind of protect the paint. But yeah, they're both on, looking good, and making these lights nice and solid. Yeah, this helped a lot. So much better than they were before. So earlier I mentioned that I had a fancy master plan for the switch. Well, this is what I'm going to be using. This is a factory switch out of one of these cars, Opal. It's actually a rear window defog switch. Pretty cool. You can see this switch is actually made by Hella. And it's got the Opal logo there. And made in Germany. So it all kind of ties together. Not to mention this will actually fit perfectly in the dash like it's meant to be there. And there's a provision for a light. So, this just looks to the naked eye like it's a black plastic switch, but in fact, it lights up purple. How cool is that? So, I got this little socket and bulb from superbrightleds.com. It's a 74 bulb. Pretty bright little thing for what it is. But the main thing here was finding something that would fit in this switch. So, as you can see, that actually fits in there. I'll just have to figure out a way to more permanently attach it and then wire everything together. Well, I just had a very educational moment where I almost burnt the car to the ground. I went to connect up this switch and turned it on and it proceeded to melt the entire wiring harness from the switch to the relay. So there are a couple important things that I didn't fully understand going into this. So I think it's a good time to have a nice little educational segment on how switches and relays work, why I had this problem, what's different about this, and how to solve it, and how to understand these systems moving forward so you don't run into a problem like this. And that Blue Jay is crazy. Whoa. Anyway, I'm also gonna have to buy a completely new wiring harness because I fried a good part of this one and don't really trust it anymore, so. Cool. Okay, after completely rewiring the system with the new harness, I have now hooked up the switch properly this time. So here's the deal. Battery positive comes in up here. I've put a vacuum cap over that middle post that was so troublesome just to make sure it's isolated and doesn't arc between any of these. 
And then this one down here is the switched positive. So one of them is going to the relay to turn on the lights. The other one is the positive for the little light bulb. And as far as the negative from the wiring harness, it's only going to the negative for the light bulb. So this is the way to do it. And if I flip the switch, bam. And I see up ahead, the fog lights are on. Heck yeah. Okay, so I just put a quick wrap of tape around it just cause I don't want this to, shut up train. Okay, I just put a quick wrap of electrical tape around this just cause I don't want, especially this battery positive to touch metal and ground out. So now I can install this in the dash. So here's why I was so intent on using this switch. It's actually designed to fit this car and this dash. If I can actually get it in here. Look at that. Meant to be there. Sweet. Okay, now that I have finally achieved victory over the wiring situation and hopefully over the wobble situation, it's time to go for another test drive. So let's hope they don't wobble and the aim is decent, but I'll probably go somewhere where there's a nice flat wall and work on the aim a little bit and make sure they're just pointing straight ahead and not up. Since these are driving lights rather than fog lights, they're sort of the same as high beams, which means you don't actually need to dip them down. They just go straight ahead. If these were fog lights, we would actually need to uh, dip them down a little bit. But if they're pointed straight ahead, I'll be a happy camper. Let's try them out. Okay, we're going for a final little test drive here. I've got my camera set up completely manual mode, so the exposure is not gonna change when I change the lighting situation. So I wanted to give a accurate view of what's happening and what kind of difference these make. So right now I'm driving around with my regular low beams. And these are my high beams. Switch back to low beams and those are my wipers, and there's a car coming. The only problem with this switch is I can fuse it with the wiper switch pretty easily. There's the driving lights on. Back off, try not to blind people, even though they blind me all the time. The blinding LEDs that I hate. Here's a good stretch. Okay, these are my low beams. And I'll turn on the driving lights. Nice. They really do light up far in the distance and now that they're nice and centered, they really do go out there a long ways. It's pretty helpful. Okay, driving lights. Nice. When I get up to something close, you can kind of see very narrow spotlight. Turn them off again. It makes quite a difference. Okay. We'll turn on my high beams and then driving lights. And they actually kind of blend together. I can see a little difference. We turn off the driving lights. Oh yeah, they definitely add something to it for sure. Yeah, that's driving lights off. Driving lights on, nice. But anyways, you're not supposed to drive around with all of them on at once. Yeah, that guy flashed me. So these do get in people's eyes, so I should be very selective about where I use them. I could tell right there that the beam was right in that guy's face. Now right here, I don't think I blinded that guy because the beam was going off to the right but I better switch them off here. Low beams, driving lights. Yep, the verdict is I like these. I think they look really cool. They perform well. Success all the way around.
Well, I think I can finally call this project an unqualified success. And by unqualified, I mean I'm probably not qualified to do any kind of electrical work professionally. But you know what? I learned a lot in this process. There was a lot of trial and error, and I had to go through some failures to reach success. But that's kind of how it goes. And I'm actually really happy with the results here. They're rock solid. They don't jiggle around anymore. Uh, they light up the road nicely. I've got them aimed well. I've got the nice little factory switch that integrates in the dash so it all looks good. I did this non-invasively so I didn't have to drill any new holes or anything so all this could be removed with no problem. Um, and yeah, more importantly I think they look really cool. Anyways, thanks for coming along for this journey. I hope it was fun and educational to some extent. I've got some more projects coming up on this car so if you're interested in following along, follow along. <laughs> See you later.